Uh, what, what's, what is Ridge Hall and where does that come from? So there was a process of giving 10, 20 names, the first name of one name that I chose and the, the last name of another. And Triple H went, I like them and he's the boss. So I'm, well, if you like it, yeah. so do I. <laughs> How on earth did you make the transition? How did you find WWE? Um, I'd always been a fan from, from a young boy, you know, like I think I heard Sean talk before about uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was my guy. You know, I had the blue jeans, I had the... Stone Cold T-shirt, you know, I was dropping everybody with a stunner when I was like 10 years old. Um, there were beds broken in my house, so I'd always been a fan. Um, but then being from a working class town, my dad played rugby, so he pushed me in that direction. And fortunately I was good enough to make a living, but I tore my quad playing for Salford and they let me go while I was on my honeymoon. So I'm like, okay. Lovely. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, so, that, was, um, that was pretty sound of them, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was laying in bed in Cancun and I'd, I'd toyed with the idea of starting, you know, looking at wrestling schools before, but it had always been shot down by the boys, you know. Oh, why do you want to do that? You know, obviously it's, it's quite a taboo subject sometimes when, you, when you're around the lads. And I saw a tweet from William Regal um, saying anybody who's looking to get into professional wrestling needs to look up the coaching services of someone called Marty Jones. Now, Matty Jones used to wrestle in the world of sport days, seven-time mid-heavyweight champion. So I shot him an email, laid him my bed in Cancun, he emailed me straight back. Two days later, I was at my first wrestling practice. But it's on your honeymoon? Straight away, as soon as, as, soon as I got back from my honeymoon. <laughs> it was like two two days later, straight straight to straight in the ring. What is Ridge Holland? Where does that come from? So there was a process of giving 10, 20 names, and I was, you know, and they just matched up to like the the first name of one name that I chose and the, the last name of another. And Triple H went, I like them and he's the boss. So I'm, well, if you like it, yeah. so do I. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's how that came about. Yeah, Sounds like a cowboy, doesn't it? Ridge Holland. Ridge Holland, yeah. It's, the, it's not the most Yorkshire name, no. but you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll, make it, we'll, we'll make it work. Yeah. We'll make it work. Yeah, exactly. So are you a, if, let me get my terminology right here. Are you a... A baby face or a heel? I'm a villain. I'm a heel. Are you a heel? Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Right. Right. Predominantly, when I yeah. first started doing stuff in NXT UK, because I, I just came in as a big lad throwing people around and people like to see that. So I did get a kind of baby face reaction, but now <clears throat> now that the character's evolving and stuff and I'm not a very nice person, I'm, I'm uh, you know, in the ring anyway. That's uh, <laughs> We're going down more, more of the, the heel route. Oh my goodness, that injury that you got in that live match last year, I think it was, was horrific. Yeah, uh it wasn't it wasn't pretty just a freak accident. I was oh. I was I was outside the ring and my opponent jumped from the ring onto me and I tried to catch him, but my foot wasn't planted right, so I fractured dislocated my left ankle oh. and then at the same time dislocated my right kneecap and ruptured my right oh. patella tendon. Oh my so god. So it's a so it's a buy one, get one free on uh Oh. On, on injuries there, so yeah, it wasn't that, pretty. That's horrendous. It was but not it just, pretty. It just go. It just goes to show the day. You know, people they say certain things about what we do, but yeah. it's it, it hurts and it's tough, and you you have to be tough to be in it. Like you see some of the documentaries yeah. on it, and the what the boys put their bodies through is unbelievable. Just like it was, mm -hmm. I watched one on. Um, it's an old one. Up, it's on. It's on Netflix, and mankind is it talking? Mick Foley's talking in it. Uh, Beyond the Mat. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah. what he puts himself through. And, and, the, and the other guys, but I'm like, shit, then I'll bet. You must be, <laughs> you you love this job. Yeah, and, oh, and as far as like athletes coming across and you, you don't you don't have to love it to begin with, but you learn to love it. You know, it's, it's uh, it, it is tough. And, and if, if you don't learn to love it, unfortunately, you'll probably find yourself leaving. Do you have to, um, do you, how in advance do you, uh, you know, know where you're going to move up the stages will you like will they give you a, like a heads up will you be like in a month's time if you do this you're going to be to a main event that's not a main event but you know whatever the equivalent is like sort of thing um they don't necessarily tell you no um but it's just they'll see you come on and then it's like it's, it's a nice little reward at like the end of the month or the end of the two months where you've been in this little tier they'll say okay yeah we think you're there you go, and you'll you'll get your your schedule for that month, and right, right. you'll be like, oh, oh, okay, I'm in a different class. I've I've I've, I've pro I'm progressing, you know. Um, and th there's no there's no set time frame. Everyone progresses and picks up. Some people may f pick up the physical aspects really quick, but they might not pick up the psychology as quick. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it's it's kind of a mixed bag on on how fast different people and different athletes yeah. progress. And look, do you um, understand why WWE um, are looking at rugby union, rugby league, which is what we're hearing? I mean, I'm sure they're looking at lots of other different sports and just trying to find the supreme ultimate athlete. But do you see a correlation? Because actually, on paper, they're, they're not that similar. No, I mean, they, they are... They are pretty diff di different but you look at the mindset of, of the wrestlers being in that grind and been been you know having that strength strength of mind and being strong-willed yeah. that's what that's what rugby players are you know we're tough yeah. um we, we put our bodies we put our bodies through the ringer um and there's that team ethos which we have at nxt which rugby players um i think will be drawn to um yeah. and I, th I think there's definitely a market there for for, for rugby players of either code to to make that transition it's just being able to i suppose we all know guys that have charisma around the lads and they tend to be a bit withdrawn outside of that rugby setting so one of the things i would say is that if you do get an opportunity any players that do get an opportunity to to make that transition is going with the white belt mentality don't be afraid to you know make a bit of div of yourself because it, it might lead to something that's that's that's, you know, that's greater down the line. Just don't be afraid to fall flat, flat on your face. You've been watching The House of Rugby Season 3 on Joe.